So I, I told my wife, I wish he wouldn't be such a backseat driver. And she said, I'm not a backseat driver. I'm the navigator. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to imply that my wife is cold-blooded, but if the temperature drops below 60 degrees, she'll drop dead. Okay. I'm Brian, and since this is Collector's Confessions, I want to make a confession. You ready to hear a confession? Sure. Okay. I'm Chad, by the way. He's like, oh, yeah. Thanks. I forgot about him. Uh, I am a fallen Trekkie. Let me tell you what this means. Basically, there was a time in my life where Star Trek was really, really, really important to me. And uh, then uh, somewhere along the line, I got distracted. Got distracted. By, you know, things. Things. Life gets in the way. And, I, and kids and yeah, all this other stuff, stuff, you know. And so I really recently been looking for a reason to get back into Trek because I kind of miss it. Let's just say there's a Trek size hole in my life that I wanted to fill in up. your heart, in my heart, my heart of That's hearts. That's the arrhythmia. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I am now using this show as a reason to get back into Trek. See how I did that? Okay. Yeah. So what uh, my idea here is is that we're going to take a look at different episodes, different cultures, different races that appear in the Star Trek franchise, uh, going with the Mego figures as a starting point. Okay. So, we, the first one I picked is the Gorn. Well, before we start, mm -hmm. we are close to 2,000 subscribers. Oh, right. Forgot about this. And in celebration mm -hmm. of Brian's renewed love, renewed love. for Trek... We're going to be doing a giveaway that's Trek related. Stay tuned to the end of this video. We will reveal what you need to do to be part of our 2000 subscriber giveaway and what the awesome giveaway will be. If you've been a subscriber for long enough, you know we have done many, many awesome giveaways in the past. This will be our next one. So stay tuned to the end. Back to you there. Okay. Kirk. And we're back into it. So the Gorn. Uh, as a race, first appeared in an episode called Arena. It was the 18th episode of the first season and aired in 1967. Uh, Arena was written by Gene L. Kuhn, who this was actually the first episode he wrote for the series, and he wrote a lot of other episodes after that, with a story credit to a science fiction writer named Frederick Brown. It's kind of an interesting behind-the-scenes story here, just as an aside. Frederick Brown wrote a story, a short story, years before that was very, very similar to the story of Arena. Though Gene L. Kuhn never read that story. He wrote the script, and then researchers at CBS recognized the similarity to Brown's story, and they were like, uh-oh, we should make this right. So they paid Brown for a story credit, basically to avoid the idea that they were infringing on okay. anybody's copyright and okay. stealing anybody's ideas. It was kind of a nice up-and-up -up thing for them to do. Oh, and by the way, the uh, the episode was directed by Joseph Pevney. And here's what happens. Kirk and the crew end up at a planet called Cestus III, where there's a Federation colony. They go down to, you know, check out how everything's going, and they find the colony's been completely destroyed. Well, they were summoned there. They were summoned there, right. And they go, and they find the, that the colony has been completely destroyed by a mysterious enemy. The one survivor that is there has no explanation for why they've been attacked and while they're there they then get attacked they escape this attack they follow the ship well not everyone escapes not everyone escapes of course red shirt dies <gasps> uh not everyone gets away yeah true a uh, few people die and actually did you know that during one of the explosions during the battle scene both William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy suffered uh, almost permanent tinnitus from really? the explosions. They were too close to one of them. Right? Wow. So they pursue the ship and the uh, this unknown alien ship at this point. Uh, they pursue them into a distant part of the galaxy where they are stopped by a race called the Metrons. Now the Metrons don't want this fighting going on in their section and they're really, really, really powerful. So to settle the problem, they transport Kirk as the captain of the Enterprise, and the Gorn captain. Do you have a name? Down to the planet. No, he's just called the Gorn captain in this episode. No name. No name. And basically the idea is the Metrons are like, okay, if you want to settle this, you guys will fight it out against each other. Sans weapons, mano y mano. So uh, this is where we get our first look at the Gorn. And to be kind of honest with you, the original look is garbage. It's a little goofy. It, it it's a little not goofy. Look, even the way the movement in the costume like how it crinkles up. Right. Uh, and, not look good. and we're not um, just poking fun here. 
there's a reason that we're bringing up the fact the way that the Corn looks originally, and we'll, we'll get to that eventually. Typical Star Trek style, there's a battle, Kirk wins through ingenuity, and then he has the chance to finish the Gorn off, and he doesn't. Because awful battle. Federation. Battle, you know, battle good guys awful. versus bad guys, Kirk shows compassion. Which is really a cool way to end the episode because through most of the episode, Kirk is driven by revenge. He wants to revenge the deaths at Cestus III. And then at the end, he realizes that, you know, he's not going to be the cruel, horrible, uh, you know, revenger. He's a revenger now? Yeah, that, that he thinks he's going to be. And that was it for the appearance of the Gorn. Now, the Gorn kind of disappear for a little while from Trek law they lore at this point. Again, I think because so many people thought the original look of the Gorn was a little bit goofy. Well, and it, No, the problem with the Gorn, too, was the movement. It was so it was very slow. slow. Yeah, it wasn't very intimidating. So, on a, in, a, in, a, in an episode where it's supposed to be a, this great battle, the mm -hmm. Gorn moves as slow. I, I can't even say it's an alligator because an alligator moves fast. It's, it's, what's the slowest lizard? Whatever the slowest lizard is, what it moves, just slow moving. It was there was yeah. no, it was no like in, you weren't like worried because he was moving so slow. Yeah, it seemed like Kirk could have just yeah, outrun just him the entire around, time. Around he could have ran yeah. circles around them. Yeah, but again, I think that a lot of that had to do with the suit, the budget okay. constraints, things like that. Um, so the the Gorn aren't seen again in live action for a very long time. So the Gorn actually show up in Star Trek the Animated Series in an episode called The Time Trap in the first season, and it was episode 12, and it aired in 1973. This was written by Joyce Perry and directed by Hal Sutherland, who I think directed a lot of those animated okay. series. I'm actually not familiar with the animated series. This was one of the first episodes I've if ever watched. If you're a watched. Star Trek fan and you, mm -hmm. and you like original Star Trek, animated series is fantastic. Yeah, and I have to say, I really, watching. again, just as an aside what did you to watch what we're really talking about, uh, Paramount Plus. So, uh, it actually was a lot of fun to yeah, watch the animated series. It's, it's mm -hmm. all the voices. Oh, yeah, they, they all did all the voices. Everybody voice. was there. So what happens mm -hmm. is Star Trek gets canceled after three seasons. Three seasons. Mm -hmm. And they get the animated series to continue. In 73, it, yeah. Which was on, I believe it was on a Saturday morning. It was a Saturday morning cartoon. Yes, yeah. And it's great. It has a lot of, for those of you who are into like sort of the nostalgia of, of Generation X and the 70s or whatever, uh, this is a very 70s animated yes. show and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun It's more watch. kid friendly. Yeah. Less, you know, the themes aren't as heavy. Yeah. But definitely fun for, for anyone who likes Star Trek. Totally fun for a Trek fan. Yeah. yeah. So, the Gorn actually show up in this episode, but they're in the background. They're part of this ruling council that rules over this pocket universe where the Enterprise and a Klingon ship gets trapped. Uh, they, they actually don't even have any speaking lines. I just was trying to find all the Gorn appearances that I could locate, and this was one of them. Okay. And the Gorn that they show in the episode looks almost exactly like the one from Arena, uh, but it moves a lot more fluidly. Okay. Even though it's animated. All right. Yeah. It's wearing the same exact tunic. Same exact tunic. And, and, yeah, all that stuff. Kind of leopard skinny looking tunic. Right. So the Gorn then disappear for quite a while. We actually don't hear or see of them again in Trek until 2005. Wow. Where they show up in Star Trek Enterprise in an episode called In a Mirror Darkly Part 2. Uh, season 4, episode 19. Like I already said, it was 2005. Uh, written by Manny Cotto and Mike Sussman and directed by Marvin Rush. Almost 50 years, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a long, long time. Uh, here's what happens in this episode. It's the second part of a longer series and it takes place within the Mirror Universe. Now, those of you who are Trek fans know what we're talking about here, the Mirror Universe. Those of you who don't, there's this Mirror Universe where the Federation are actually bad guys, they're conquerors, where the Federation turned out to be more like the Klingon Empire than like the Federation we know. And this takes place in there where there's like an evil version of Captain Archer for Enterprise and all this other stuff. And they somehow get their hands on a advanced version of the USS Defiant, which is a starship from 100 years later. It's a very long explanation, time travel, near okay. universe, it's the whole thing. But on the Defiant, hidden in the uh, ventilation ducts is a Gorn called Slar, who's slowly picking off the crew that's taken over the Defiant. He's a good guy then? Not really, well, no. They're in the mirror universe, he's a good guy. Yeah, but he's just a killer. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's really no good guys. It's kind of a dour story, actually, the in a mirror darkly is a bit, a bit okay. down for Trek, in my opinion. Eventually, Archer does catch up with Slar and kill him, and then the story proceeds past him. 
and it kind of plays like an alien ripoff, okay. which I was kind of unhappy it with. It sounds like it. Yeah, it was a bit of an alien ripoff. But if you're looking for Gorn, there you got Gorn. Now, things get a little better from here because the next time the Gorn show up, it's in Strange New Worlds. If you haven't watched Star Trek Strange New Worlds, I got to talk to you about that in a little while. So the first time we get uh, a little bit of Gorn for our money is in an se- episode called Memento Mori. It's in season one, episode four, aired in 2022. It is written by Davy Perez and Bo DeMaio, directed by Dan Liu. Here's what happens. The crew of the Enterprise, led in Stranger Worlds by Captain Pike, and the crew that was there before Kirk was on board, they are run afoul of a bunch of Gorn ships. We only see the Gorn ships in this episode. And one of the people that's a crew uh, crew member of the Enterprise uh, survived a Gorn attack when she was a child. So the episode is very much about her trauma of surviving the viciousness of the Gorn attack. And what they really lean into is the horrific aspect of a reptilian race like the Gorn. They are portrayed as just heartless murderers, despite the fact that they're advanced technologically and a warp-capable race. And it's actually a really, really interesting depiction of them because they lean into just how scary they could be and maybe how scary that Gorn captain should have been mm. in the arena. Mr. Gorn. Arena. Kirk would have lost. It would have been a hell more of a much more tougher fight. The Gorn really remind me of the Slee stack from Land of the Lost. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, Bosk from Star Wars. Yes. Yeah, a lot like Very Bosk. similar look. I, I, yeah. The thing with the Gorn is you could, I could easily see the Gorn being in this, snuck into a Star Wars movie. No, just stick, stuck in the background yeah. of something yeah. somewhere. Stuck into a Star yeah, mm-hmm. that he would work. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, there is a very slight reference to the Gorn in Star Trek Discovery. Captain Lorca, who has a bunch of uh, biological weapons basically in his hidden little chamber in Star Trek Discovery. In one of his glass cases, he has what is obviously a Gorn skeleton. Oh. But they don't even mention it. Interesting. There's no Gorn in there. But there is in the background, you see in a glass case, a Gorn skeleton. So obviously, Captain Lorca, looking for weapons to fight the Klingon Empire, was looking at Gorn as a possibility. Maybe they were hunting Gorn. Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Now, the next time the Gorn show up in live action Trek is again in Strange New Worlds, also season one, but this time episode nine, and also airing during the 2022 season. This one was written by Davy Perez, directed by Christopher Byrne. It's called All Those Who Wander. The Enterprise is on its way to deliver supplies to an outpost. They get a call from Starfleet. No, no not a call, but no, know, a message, get, a transmission. They get a phone call on their cell phones? Yeah, they get a phone call. And that, that a ship has crashed on a nearby wasteland of a planet, a sort of icy, rocky, desolate place. They go down to search for survivors. And what do they find? Gorn. Gorn. But worse than that, they find a Gorn nursery. Apparently, the Gorn, when they lay their eggs, they place them in out-of-the-way places, and they then try to trap other living things there for their newly hatched lizard babies to isn't, eat. Isn't the cold bad for lizards, though? They apparently do well in this. Okay. I don't know why. I'm not sure. Because they're warm-blooded, right? I don't think they are. But the females have breasts. So they're warm-blooded. Then. So they must be. I don't know. But aren't lizards cold-blooded? They usually are. Uh, the Gorn comedian made a joke about oh, okay. you know, it. Right. I don't know. But it gets even worse from there. Apparently, Gorn eggs do best when they are laid inside of a living <laughs> thing and then hey. eat the thing that sounds like when they eggs. hatch. Yes, again, it's kind of a connection. They're kind of ripping off the xenomorphs from Alien a little bit. But we've definitely taken this goofy thing from this 1960s show, and it's become a pretty scary antagonist, the way it always should have been, I think. So really, Strange New Worlds kind of completes this improvement of the Gorn, which, in my opinion, matches the way that a lot of the newer series have taken the general ideas of the old series and improved upon them. Okay. I'm one of those Trek fans who thinks that with every new series, maybe the possible exception of Enterprise, Trek gets better. Okay. I think Next Generation is a huge, a huge. improvement on the original series. 
I thought Deep Space Nine was a cool refinement of a lot of those ideas in, Deep, in uh, Next Generation, and then on, and then on, and then on. And uh, the best thing that I discovered during this was Strange New Worlds. I did not watch Strange New Worlds before this. These are the first episodes I watched, and I gotta say, I am hooked. It has reawakened my love of Trek. How long is each episode? Uh, Strange New Worlds about 42 minutes okay. or so. so. It's a, it's yeah, a without commercials. hour length on regular TV. Okay. Yeah, yeah, an hour length show. All right, I'll have to right. check it out. It is a great show. Good. Great I'll, show. I'll check it out, maybe. So, that's it for our investigation of the Gorn in the show. Gorn be gone. But let's talk about Gorn collectibles. There are a lot of Gorn collectibles, surprisingly, since it really only appears in that one episode for a long time. Mm -hmm. But it just looked cool. I, yeah, I think the visual not appeal in, is the thing. Not in the episode. As long as it's not moving. Yeah, not a, it didn't look cool in the episode. So, as Brian said earlier, we're going to be looking at first the Mego figure and how the Mego figure of the Gorn, which was a seldomly used alien, made its way into the Mego line. Yeah. So, when you get a look at the original Gorn Mego figure, maybe it's right here now? Yeah, probably. Look at that. So That's it, supposed to be a Gorn. It's, it's, it's one of the strange Amigo figures made early on mm -hmm. because it's not, none of the parts on it are original. Right. The head and body are made from the lizard from Marvel, um, from World's Greatest Heroes, Marvel mm -hmm. character who's fight Spider-Man. Yep. And the uniform is from the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. So they kind of just hodgepodge this together mm -hmm. to make the Gorn wrong color Easily could have made that tunic with no problem. Yeah, the tunic was such a simple. They garment. gave it a phaser. Right. It just everything about the Gorn in the Mego line is wrong. Yeah, they just sort of it's like they kit bashed it. Yeah, uh, it from just, a bunch of different things and then just put it out. And I think again that might be because I don't know when when did the Mego figures come out as related to the series? They weren't after the series. After was, it came out, actually, so, the Mego figures come out during the animated series. Right. So. There may, unless it was a rerun, there would not have been a lot of people who would have rewatched Arena. No. So the Gorn figure, people might have just been like, they, oh, it's a lizard know. man, right. Gorn, whatever. And if you check yeah. back, we did a whole entire video on the yes. first line of Migos mm -hmm. uh, Star Trek figures. I'll right. put a link at the end of the video and I'll put a mm -hmm. link right up here right now. Yeah. It's. The series is filled with really, really good-looking aliens. Like they did some great work. Yeah. The Mugato. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amazing-looking figures for Migo. I'm not sure why they skimped on the Gorn. Yeah, I guess we we'll maybe do a little more research into that at some yeah. point. Now, the Migo figure was eventually corrected. 2018. 2018, the Migo figure comes out again. The Gorn figure. Yep. And this time, it looks like this. It's green. It has the tunic. It looks more like the Gorn from the episode, the right. arena. It took them a long time to rectify the mistake, but they did. Mm -hmm. And if you if you are a toy collector, and I'm assuming part of you watching this are, mm -hmm. if you're a Star Trek collector, I'm assuming most of you are, mm -hmm. Mego has been re-releasing their old properties over the last five years or so. Mm -hmm. As they continue, right now they're in the midst of uh, World's Greatest Heroes for DC being released constantly. New. Right. We did a big video on that too. If you'd like to watch that one, mm -hmm. there's a link for that one. That's a that's a good video. So other than the Mego figures, there are other collectibles related to the Gorn. Again, this obscure alien shows up in one original episode yeah. and then isn't even mentioned again until 2005. No Next Generation five. episodes. Never, never shows in Next Generation. But there's a lot of stuff out there, I think, again, because it's one of those things that people think of, like Batman surfing yeah. in the 66 series. It's just something it that happens pops up. once. It happened once, but it just keeps popping yeah. up into all the dancing. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff, you know. So there was a Playmates figure from 1997 of the Gorn. Actually, a really good looking it's figure. It's a good looking figure. I like the Playmates figures from the 90s. They look really good. Uh, I was very upset that they canceled the new Playmates yeah. Star Trek figures. They were reissuing a lot of the old ones. Yeah, ones. yeah. I got the Picard one and I haven't gotten any more yet. I just, I don't know if Trek still holds the weight it's held. It's funny. I, I feel like it doesn't, and that makes me very sad. It's, it's just not. Yeah. Yeah. I've always my I think that the issue with Star Trek and I've said this for many years is Star mm. Trek is very a very intelligent show. It is. And mm -hmm. I don't believe that the intelligence level of society is at its peak right now. Well, I also worry that it's the positivity of Trek 
because people want like the dark and gritty yeah. and Trek's they not. tried that with Trek and it doesn't really Trek's work. Trek's not supposed to be dark. It's supposed no. To, it's, it's supposed to give you a bright future. Right. It's Even optimistic. just the whole, Brian made me watch Arena before we did this episode. It's mm-hmm. the first time I watched a Star Trek episode in mm-hmm. many, many, many years. Mm-hmm. And all of its shortcomings aside, the fact that you have a crew Mm-hmm. of the first female black character in a mm-hmm. lead role. Shocking. And you have... To consider when it happened. You have an Asian, you have a Scotsman, you have, mm-hmm. you know, whatever you want to call Kirk. You have an alien... <laughs> an alien... Canadian. Canadian. An alien, you know, on the on the bridge. It's... Yeah. It, it, to me, it was, it was really a reflection on society in the 1960s, yeah. how the world can come together even sure. though everybody's fighting and it was really it's it's always been a positive look in the future same things with next generation yep. it's always been a really positive look at what the future could be if we all just you know got Stop. together and <laughs> saw what the important things are not what the stupid things are right exactly so in addition to that playmate figure from 97 there is of course a Funko Pop. I didn't know there was a Funko Pop. Oh, there's a Gorn Funko Pop. Okay. Yeah, it, it goes for about 40 bucks on eBay. All right. I, I think that. I, that's what I saw there. And uh, along with that, you get a nice plush from Kid Robot. It's a companion to a Kirk plush. And uh, the Kirk plush is holding the bamboo cannon oh, okay. from that episode. Does it have diamonds in it? So you could, no, uh, unfortunately right. not. But so you can actually get the Kirk plush and get the Gorn plush. And you put them together on your little shelf. That would be a great... Trek would be a great thing for McFarlane to do. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if it would sell well enough for them. Uh, but think about that as like a two-figure thing, him with the thing. Oh, it'd be great. Oh, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. All right. Yeah. There's a Bendy Figs, Gorn. Uh, there's a whole line of Bendy Figs Star Trek stuff from the original that. series and from Next Generation. Okay. And from, I think, oh, from Discovery, uh, actually all the shows. Uh, there's a ship replica, of course, from Eagle Moss, because Eagle Moss has all they, the ship they, replicas. Uh, they have more than ship replicas. They do characters, too. Eagle yeah. Moss does mm-hmm. a lot of good... If, you, if you're ever looking for something to display, Eagle mm-hmm. Moss has some great yeah. items that you could just throw up on your desk or yeah. you know, any way you display your stuff. And that's good. That'll set you back a little more than yeah, those things. They're, they're and there is definitely a Gorn Hallmark ornament, for sure. Because no, there there's is. lots of Trek yeah. there's a Hallmark, Gorn Hallmark ornament. ornament. Yeah. I used to have a Voyager Trek ornament. Right. It was the Voyager, the ship. I lost it. I, I have all the Star Wars. I have all the Star Wars ones. I'm a big Star Wars fan, not mm-hmm. as much a Star Trek fan, and I think yeah. that's. I like Star Trek. I've always watched it, but it's. I've always been more of a Star Wars. Fan. Yeah, but you have to draw a line somewhere. I do, mm-hmm. and I don't fight with Star Trek fans. Like, no, I'm just saying, yeah, people we know. You don't have room. Who fights with Star Trek fans? Isn't that like that's a whole big thing? There's been movies like in the movies when what was one of the. Um, don't they fight in one of Kevin Smith's movies with the Star, Star Trek fans and Star Wars fans? How they hate each other? I don't remember which one. And they that? make fun. They pick on each other. They make fun of they each do? other. They no, do. Yeah. I don't remember that. There's a couple of movies I've seen we with can't, that. Can't we all just get along? Can't we all love the stars. Along. We come all on. love science science fiction. The stars, both Wars and Trek. We yeah. can come together. There you go. So that's it. Wrap up the Gorn. Okay. So that's it for our Gorn exploration here that I titled "Going Going Gorn." He mentioned the title in this. Oh, sorry. And the title uh, drop? Yeah, that was the title drop. Okay. Yeah. So, what's the next one we should do? We want to know from you. Should we start looking at Klingons, Romulans? Should we look at the uh, what are the guys with the antennas on them? Like, see, look, this is how bad I've gotten the oh, track. You're, you're, you've fallen off the track. Andorians. Sure. Andorians. Andorians. So basically, what we're, we what look we're at saying, Andorians? What we're saying to do is look at the Amigo figures. Pick one of the Amigo figures. Mm-hmm. We're going to do an episode on where the Amigo figure, that's you know, character made into Amigo figure appears. Mugato. That's a good one. Yeah. What, 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 what do you want us? Where do you want us to go next? We need your guidance. Yeah. Tell okay. us which episode we should look at next. And force me to watch. Yeah. And he'll have to watch it. I will, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. As promised at the beginning of this episode, we are going to be doing our 2,000 subscriber giveaway, and it's a good one. All you have to do is you have to be a subscriber. You have to, we have to hit 2,000, so we not, we're not sure yet which video this is going to be in, but we will definitely note in the title, this is our 2,000 subscriber video. It may be sometime this month, it might be sometime next month, mm-hmm. but coming soon, there will be a 2,000 subscriber video, mm-hmm. and you will have to be a subscriber, and you'll have to comment on that video, yep. not comment on this video, but you're not enjoying it, we don't have 2,000 subscribers, sure. and the winner will get this. An autographed picture of everyone's favorite communications officer. Unfortunately, she's deceased Michelle at this p- time. Nichols. One of the one of the greatest 
female actresses on TV of all time. Shell Nichols. Is from my personal collection. I got mm-hmm. this in person from her many years ago. I have some Star Trek autographs. I do. Mm-hmm. Downstairs. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I? Mm-hmm. So once we hit 2,000 subscribers, tell your friends to subscribe so we get there faster. We will be giving this away in one of our videos. You can have your own autograph picture of Lieutenant Uhura. Thanks for watching. Love what you collect. Collect what you love. And win stuff. Especially if it's Trek. See you next time. Mm-hmm.